Hey, this is the CMB channel. I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my post fight analysis for UFC on Fuel TV 8. Um, overall, uh, you know, the card actually was pretty lackluster until the co main and main event, uh, which is ironic just because, um, you know, on paper, doing the predictions, I thought this would be a pretty awesome card. And it turned out to just be like kind of ho hum. Um, a lot of bad judging, <laughs> to be honest. A couple split decisions that and fights that I don't feel deserve split decisions. Um, I got two wrong. I got Vandalay versus Stan wrong, and Yushin Okami versus Lombard wrong. And to be honest, I mean, it's cool I got the Diego Sanchez fight r correct, but like, you know, as far as my picks go, but I thought Gomi won. And I honestly thought Kung Hyo Kang beat uh, Alex Caceres. So, should have four wrong, to be honest with you. But yeah, just uh, two wrong here. Um, fight of the night. So yeah, there's some pretty bad judging this night. Um, the Octagon girls uh, were really cute, <laughs> I, I have to admit, especially the Korean one. Um, Dana White said on Twitter that fight of the night went to Vanderlei versus Stan. No brainer there. And Cave of the Night actually went to both Vanderlei and Mark Hunt. Um, and there was no submission of the night. So let's get started. Vanderlei Silva beat Brian Stan by KO in the second round. Um, man, this fight was just bonkers. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, especially the first round exchanges, just going rocking, socking robots. You know, um, strategy gets thrown out the window for just. You know, just to finish. Um, you know, I was saying that these guys probably lost years of their lives just on that first round. Um, both shown some pretty strong chins early on. It, I was actually really surprised, you know, because in the predictions, I said that Vanderlei's chin was deteriorating, you know, and I thought Stan would just knock him out. Um, but it was Vanderlei who knocked him out in the second round. And Stan's never been knocked out, to my knowledge. Uh, he got submitted, but knocked out. Heck, I never, I hardly even see the guy get dropped. No, no, he, he did lose WEC uh, to Cantwell, if I'm not mistaken, I believe, by either K or TK, I forgot. Um, it's kind of weird, though, because I don't know where they go next. Like, Vanderlei at this point, you know, um, geez, is he on a win streak? Does he come off the window over um, Cundley, right? Or, jeez, I think he might be coming off, off the window over... No, no, no. Um, he's coming off the loss to Rich Franklin. So, Vanderlei, at this point, like, I don't know what they do with him. He's a name to get fighters over, especially pr young prospects. So, in that sense, you know... You can use them in there, or you can use them in like a senior division fight. You can have him fight like a Vitor Ralfert. Um, he has a grudge against uh, Chael Sonnen. Um, and that's pretty much what you're going to use him for. I I don't know what weight class he's going to fight in permanently, if he's going to do 185 or 205. He's getting older, it'd probably be better if he does 205. Well, one thing that's noticeable too is like even though these guys are 205 and they cut to 185, they did not look like small, particularly small 205ers, I mean, that, or anything like that. Uh, Stan, I heard you going back to 185. Uh, you know, you got have fun fights um, near the top division. He's coming off a loss. You can give him, like, a Hector Lombard. I think Hector Lombard should cut to 170. Uh, if not, you know, there's other fights uh, that you can probably give him that uh um, Tim Bosch versus uh, Brian Sand would work. Mark Munoz, Brian Sand would work as well. Um, man, that was one of the best rounds. <laughs> that first round was just insanely fun to watch. Um, but at this point, yeah, you know, I know Stan was going through a was having a pretty big win streak at middleweight. Um, lost Michael Bisbang, lost here, lost a Chael a while back. Um, Knocked out Lucio Sakai in between. A at this point, I mean, you know, the UFC's not going to cut him. He he's got a name. 
really classy man just a really classy guy too in the feet you know in the post fight interview man this guy is one of the classiest guys it, uh, you know in the sport man I, I gotta say uh, but at this point yeah I can't really see him get into title contention but he can be in really fun fights man I mean this was just that was a hell of a fight man Next fight after that, Marco Hunter beat Stephen Struve by TKO in the third round. In the coolest way possible, the walk-off KO, man. He knocks him out and walks away like he's a boss. Man, <laughs> Marco, you know, and I read this on uh, some forums too, that like every time he went to the ground with uh, Stephen Struve, he, everyone was like, just get the F up, you know, like, what are you doing? But dude, the guy's... He's actually, like, defending submissions, passing to side mount. You know, he got mounted and swept. He did a judo throw. You know, um, he's really improved his grappling. I mean, his cardio is still crap. And, and so, oh, quite honestly, Seven Stroop's cardio is not very good either. And Stroop did the thing I thought he would, you know, when I predicted uh, Hunt to win. He stands there. He covers up. And allows his opponent to get into the most comfortable range. Well, it's Mark Hunt. This guy, he was like jumping almost to like throw his like, um, uh, throw his hooks. You know, a guy that tall shouldn't allow someone that small to, to hit him. And the problem is with Mark Hunt, he hits really hard and really accurately. It is amazing though, <laughs> seeing Mark Hunt like. One guy actually said it best. He's all like, "Man, during this fight, I had, I had both heart attacks and orgasms at the same time." <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, pretty much. You know, we, there's something about Mike Hunt. I was watching this fight with a uh, MMA newbie, and he couldn't really understand why me and my buddies were cheering so bad hard for Mark Hunt. And it's this guy's got one of the worst records in the UFC. Guys like a. You know, he's in his late 30s, you know. He's been like a perpetual underdog. His ground game used to be utter crap. I mean, it wasn't just a poor ground game. It was just bad. Now, it's like serviceable, you know. It, it's uh, it's amazing that he's actually improving, you know. I would have thought Struve would have the better cardio, but I think Hunt actually had the better cardio. Um, 2013, Mark Hunt. Four fight win streak over good guys. Chris Ducher, you know, not the greatest guy. Knockout though. Ben Rothwell, decent guy. Chuck Congo knocked him out in the first round. Now Stefan Struve knocked him out in the third round. <laughs> you know, I mean, he might be one of the only guys in heavyweight with a four fight win streak. To be perfectly honest, against progressively better competition. And also, he beat the perpetual gatekeeper of the division in Chuck Congo. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think he'll beat Cain Velasquez. I think he'll get taken down all day, every day. Uh, I don't think he'll gas out if it goes um, long. I don't think he'll beat um, Junior Dos Santos, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, it's tough to say. This guy's chin, man, is just made out of granite. But, um, yeah, you gotta say, you know, I mean, I don't think he's an immediate title contention because if Verdum beats uh, Noguera, he can be in title contention. Uh, Verdum can. Or the winner of Junior Dos Santos versus uh, Overeem. But you gotta give Mark Hunt, like, it's kind of weird because it's like, who does he fight? You know, I guess the winner of Gonzaga versus Brown, I guess. I mean, winner of Mir versus Cormier. Um, tough to say, you know. And, and quite honestly, I don't know if he should be that opposed to giving this guy the next title shot, to be perfectly honest with you. It's not, you know, at least you can sell a Cinderella story here. Like, oh, this guy lost like six in a row. You know, now he's four fight win. He won the UFC. You know, four fight win streak. You know, improving ground game. You know, you can sell him at least. But yeah, I mean, wow, Mark Hunt, 2013, four fight win streak. Never thought I'd see it. 
Definitely a pride never die moment right there with Vandalay and Hunt winning the main event and co-main event. And Gomi should have beaten Diego Sanchez, but Gomi loses by split decision to Diego Sanchez. I had it Gomi rounds two and three. Dana White on Twitter actually said he didn't know how Diego won that fight. I gotta agree. I, it's not very defensible, you know, in a fight like Alex Caceres versus King Ho, Kyung Ho King. Defensible. Second round, could have gone to Caceres. And he got the third round. This fight, I don't see anything that Diego did that gave him rounds two and three. He wasn't the more aggressive fighter. He wasn't landing the cleaner punches. He wasn't taking them down at will. I don't know. And his output was remarkably low, too. So, I don't know. how. I, I don't feel that Diego should have won this fight. I guess he should stay at 155, but he is a shell of his former self. I mean, seriously, he just does not look very good. Gomi, you know, probably going to know Sean DSC. He's coming off a, he was actually coming off a two-fight win streak, so I don't think he'll get the pink slip or anything, but just more mid to lower guys. And his division. Next right after that, Yishin Akani beat Hector Lombard by split decision. Uh, really don't know how he, how it even got the split. It should be 29-28 Yishin Akami rounds one and two. Like, I don't see any other round that Hector Lombard got except for the third round. So that one was just a head scratcher as well. Yeah, you can maybe give him a 10-8 at the third, possibly. But then that would be a draw on a scorecard, you know, but not 29-28. Okami is pretty much the spoiler. I mean, what do you do with the guy? You know, he's too good. He's winning. But he's spoiling a lot of guys that the UFC probably wants to eventually fight Anderson. He just beat Alan Belcher in this last fight, and now he beat Hector Lombard. Hector Lombard, man, uh, just, I mean, you have to say, he's one of the bigger disappointments in the UFC as of late. I mean, guy gets, from what's reported, I mean, he gets paid a lot to fight uh, in the UFC, and he has not been delivering. He looks small, too. Bosch and Okami are huge middleweights, and I don't mean small as in, like, he's not muscular. It's just, he's really short. And to the point where, and he's he's short and super muscular. But the fact of the matter is, and as coach has said, he should probably be fighting at welterweight. I mean, to be perfectly honest, he looks like a blown up, like a really muscular welterweight. That's the thing. His cardio is not very good. He hits hard, but he doesn't have the reach, and he didn't have the grappling. You know, he has good takedown defense, but Yushin Okami would take him down um, really well. Well, I don't know what to do with Okami next. You know, I mean, he got the winner of Jacare versus Philippu, I suppose. Or the winner of Vitor versus uh, Rockhold, maybe, I, I guess. But he's definitely been playing spoiler. And you can't, it's sad because you can't really give this guy a title shot. He's not, no one wants to see him fight Anderson. And honestly, his performances are grinders, you know. I mean, he, he definitely is playing the part of gatekeeper at this point. But, you know, he's keeping the gate closed pretty well. I think Lombard should go down to 170, and hopefully he can find success there. He's just not finding a lot of success at middleweight. I mean, he leads to Bosch in a fight I thought he won. Uh, but then, you know, he beat... Palhares, which is a good win, but not a great win. But then he lost to Okami. It's like, you know, you can probably have fun fights. You know, maybe you can fight like an Alan Belcher or something, or Bisbing. He has a grudge against him. Or Munoz, he has a grudge against him. But otherwise, yeah, um, he should probably cut down to, to Walterweight. Okay, next one after that, Ronnie Yaya beat uh, Misa to Hero Tell by unanimous decision. I like what I'm seeing out of Ronnie Yaya. You know, really aggressive about the takedowns. And he really got to see his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu game. Uh, he really coasted on that third round, though. Um, he wrote, uh, you know, he should just fight more lower to mid-tier of the division. 
Yeah, yeah, I think he's on a win streak now. He beat Grisby before this, you know. Um, he's not going to beat the, the upper tier guys. He's just not that type of guy to beat, like, higher level guys, you know, like a Chad Mendes or stuff. But, you know, he can give a, you know, he's a tough challenge for a lot of, like, up-and-comers and, and whatnot. That's kind of who I'd give Ronnie Yaya to. And finally, Dong Hyun Kim beat Sire Bahadurzada by unanimous decision. This fight kind of went as I expected to. I uh, got to see some showboating from Stun Gun, uh, especially at the end of the third round when he got mount. Uh, Curse of the Black Zillions uh, strikes again. It's just... Um, they keep losing. <laughs> I can't really explain why. Um, but... It could just be bad stylistic matchups, but then I don't know how you explain like Rashad versus Antonio Rogero Nogueira, for example. Or, you know, um, it's just that the guys from that camp just can't seem to win. Um, Sire should just get more strikers in the division, but, you know, as far as his prospects go, I mean, yeah, Don Hyun Kim just shut him down. Don Young Kim an interesting guy, but like, you know, when he went up against Maya, he lost, even though it's a freak rib injury or muscle spasm or whatever. And he lost a Condit. He just looks like that guy that's always gonna like win, but then, and it looks like he's close to a title shot and loses to a top guy. And that looks like kinda like what he, what's happening with him. So, um, but, he can beat the mid-tier guys pretty consistently. He beat Paul Thiago before that. So you gotta gotta give him a top guy. Rob, Robbie Lawler's coming off a win over uh, Josh Koscheck, Maybe him. Or the winner of like, um, you know, Ellenberger versus Marquardt or something like that. You gotta give him like a top guy though next. Um, but yeah. And on to the prelims. Brad Tavares beat Ricky Fukuda by unanimous decision. Um, yeah, Brad Tavares should get a stuff up in competition now. He ha he's on a good one streak, and he's shown a lot of improvement. I keep saying it, I th and I, he keeps proving it to me. He's going to be a top. I think he's going to be a top ten middleweight. Still young, still improving. He's good defensively, good takedown defense. When he got taken down, he got back to his feet. Um. One person, actually, that I was debating with on a forum said with Brad Tavares, yeah, he's good, but the problem is, it's like, who is he, you know? Like, is he just going to be that jack-of-all-trades type of guy, but master of none? And it looks like he, he prefers to keep the fight standing, and he does have good stand-up and good counter-punching, but, um, you know, he, he's not a master of stand-up. By any stretch. Uh, Fakuda, on the other hand, I know he beat the Bloss, but I know he lost to Fakuda or Philippu. So I don't, I don't know. He might get cut. He might stay. If he stays, he's a great, like, test for, like, guys like Brad Tavares. I think Tavares, like I said, step up in competition. You know? Um, Larkin's fighting someone. You know? Again, like, uh, geez, who the hell's Larkin fighting? I forgot. <laughs> Um, you know, if he wins, give him Brad Tavares. Or the winner of Philippou versus um, Jacare. That'd be pretty cool as well. Um, you know, don't give him someone super high up there, but you know, you know, Jacare's pretty high up there. <laughs> um, and it wouldn't be the best of a sick matchup for Tavares, but you know, he definitely needs a step up. That's the thing. Uh, next round, I thought Takeo Mizugaki beat uh, Brian Carey by split decision. I thought Mizugaki, you know, I I don't think it should have been split, to be perfectly honest with you, but I'm, gonna, I'm just glad the right guy won. His very emotional post-fight um, celebration slash speech was really touching. And, um, you know, it's uh, good to see him win. Uh, Misha Tate's corner... Our Misha Tate was cornering Caraway and actually told him to coast in the third round. Good job, Misha. <laughs> that was not a great advice. 
you know, that first and, and uh, you know, Kerry got like the second round, but that first round could have gone either way. Mizugaki, he's on his first two fight win streak under the Zufa banner. Um, he should fight more mid to lower tier guys in the division. Kerry's a tough guy, you know, um, but like, he should also fight more lower to mid tier guys in the division. Okay, next fight after that, Kazi Tokudome beat Cristiano Marcelo by unanimous decision. This fight kind of did it actually go the way I thought it would, but I did pick Koski to win. Um, Koski actually took down Marcelo and beat him up in his guard. Um, I thought if it hit the ground that, you know, Marcelo would have the advantage, but Marcelo off his back didn't look, I, you know, just the way it is in MMA when you get punched and, and whatnot, no gi, you know, it's, you can't play a closed guard. Um, but Kazi was getting tagged also by Marcelo as well. Um, you know, he, he's a decent prospect in the division, I suppose. It's a pretty sh big shark tank at 155. Uh, Marcelo, I mean, if he chooses a stand with his opponent with his very ugly stand up, you know, he's not going to win. Um, you know, honestly, I know he, he's. You know, he won his last fight, and I thought he should have lost against Reza Madadi, to be perfectly honest with you. But, you know, he ended up uh, winning against Madadi. But if, if he gets cut, you know, he, you know, I'm not in favor of people losing their jobs. But for the sake of having a quality standard of fighting, I just don't think Cristiano Marcelo is a UFC caliber fighter, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, not trying to be mean or anything. It, it's just there's nothing about his his ground game. is top notch was it when he's on top. His stand up does not look good. He's not a prospect. I mean, you know, quite honestly, it, it's just he doesn't serve much purpose in the UFC. To be perfectly honest with you, with Koski, just fight more lower to mid tier of his division. Next fight with that Alex Xera. Xeris beat uh, Kyung Ho Kang by split decision. I had it for uh, Kang rounds one and two. Um, I thought that uh, you know, I the second round could have gone either way. This was a fun fight though. The scrambles on the ground uh, were really fun. The stand up was good. Kang's a good prospect. Um, both of these guys are good prospects, and they're both promising prospects. Their stand up's not too bad. Kyung Ho uh, Kang's wrestling's not too bad. And both have some pretty good ground games. Um, you know, I, I'm very interested to see what both these guys will become in the future. Uh, they look like promising prospects. Uh, Caceres has really grown on me. I hated him in The Ultimate Fighter. Uh, but he's shown maturity and he, he, his fights are getting, you know, he has fun fights. And he should, looks to be improving. He's on a good win streak, too, at 135. You know, if you give him Takemi Mizugagi, it wouldn't be a bad fight, actually. Um,. Kyung Hyo Kang, you know, just, you know, lower to mid tier that division, I guess. And finally, Hyun Gyu Lim beat uh, Marcelo Garmes, Gramerez by, I, I can't pronounce it, by knee, a KO knee in the second round. The fight wasn't that great to watch. <laughs> uh, Marcelo would go for really sloppy takedowns and shoot from super far away. He was asking that need. But it ended cool, because that was a really cool knee. It was a step knee. But both these guys really looked like lower tier fighters in the UFC. I mean, honestly, it didn't look particularly impressive. Except, you know, I liked Lim's knees. Um, his gas tank didn't look that great. He's a huge welterweight. Might want to move up to 185 or something. Um, if it's getting tough for him to cut. But they should be fighting more lower to mid tiers of the division. I know Marcelo had a hard time beating Dan Stitchin of all guys, you know. Once again, you know, he needs to round out his game. And sometimes, you know, he's a guy, like I said, I mean, he's he's still young, Marcelo, but, uh, Grimaris, but he's not what I'd call like a pro, you know, he's not a top level prospect. And honestly, I don't think he's UFC quality. And for guys like him, it would be a good idea to fight in the regional scene and, you know, improve there, um, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm not, 
like I said, you know, I, I it's not like I like seeing people lose their job in the UFC or anything. It's just you know the fit uh, for the sake of standards. You know, I don't think Marcel Guimars is UFC caliber guy. If he gets cut, you know, it might actually be good for him. With Lim, like I said, more lower to mid tier of the division. So that's pretty much it for my predict, uh, post fight analysis for UFC on Fuel TV 8. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And that's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.